right, here we go, my friends. Last one on Monday. Hey, I'm Pops. This is the block. We are partying. Now, listen. I love to get stuff like this in, too. Like, I love to see all y'all's different um, comments and things on why, you know, you love a group and what have you. I love to see different creators' takes on why groups are successful or not or whatever. I love to see that. I just love to get different takes on things, you know. So this is twice. Um, and all credit for this, of course, goes to the creator, which is... Jonah T. Um, and this comes from our friend Lord Jazz. This is twice flopped. Not quite, and this is why. I don't know what this is, but I love to see different stuff like this. Um, behind the scenes stuff, different views on things, stuff like that. I love stuff like that. So, y'all want to see more like this, you let me know. We'll get it done. All credit for this goes to twice and all the creators. Um, we don't want any. We don't need any. All we want to do is promote twice. So that's what we're going to do today. So let's find out what we got here. It's about thirty-three minutes long, thirty-four minutes long. So we're gonna we're gonna get right into it, folks. Uh, don't forget check everything down in the description. Excuse me. Don't forget to check the ticker here. Get your stuff out of the shop, and then let me know. Hey, pops, my stuff's on the way. Can you play this? Done. Bam. We'll get it right up to the top for you and get it done. Okay. All right, my friends, let's go. Ready? Let's do it. I like hamburger and chocolate. Yeah. Wait a minute, where's that from? Kelly Clarkson show. Oh, yeah, I had heard they were on. Okay, I had heard they were on there. Y'all want to see that? Let me know. We'll get it done. Potato. I found my sister in the group. Okay. Twice is one of the best selling girl groups of all time. NHK News has credited Twice with helping to heal relations between South Korea and Japan. Its oldest member, Nayeon, made history by becoming the first K pop soloist to land in the top 10 on the Billboard 200. With over 5.5 billion streams, nearly 200 perfect all kills on Korean music charts, hundreds of awards, multiple sold out arena tours around the globe, Twice has permanently carved its name into music history history books. But why? Why is Twice so popular? Why does their success matter? And most importantly, how do you pronounce their name? Twice. What's up everybody? I'm Jonathan Miller and welcome back to Jonathan, oh, Miller, Jonathan Miller Music Miller, where we okay. help each other become better artists. Twice has left an unforgettable All credit to Jonathan for this then and and Twice and everybody else involved. We yeah, we definitely don't want any. We just want to promote of course Jonathan and Twice, you know. Yeah. Great stuff. Okay. Let's find out what he's talking about here. Welcome back to Jonathan Miller Music, where we help each other become better artists. Twice has left an unforgettable mark on the Hollywood wave and the music industry with their popularity continuing to grow, despite what antis on Twitter would love to start a fight with you about. In fact, in August 2022, their album Between One and Two broke their own previous sales record by 60% selling over 1 million copies. They were the first K-pop girl group in 2022 to pass 1 billion streams on Spotify alone. Twice is the first K-pop act to be honored for Billboard's Women in Music winning the Breakthrough Award in 2023. The South Korean president Moon Jae-in even cited Twice and BTS as groups helping to heal relations between South Korea and Japan. Twice's growing success in nearly eight years has become a snowball the size of an avalanche. But success is not just defined as a sales record, chart placement, or physical attribute. Success is a culmination of history. I absolutely agree with him on that. It's not just sales. It's not just, you know, everything else that he it's it's not it's all about who they are time hard work and a small dose of luck so is this just going to be a twice stand video made by a twice stand for twice stands not exactly but if you happen to be a once a k-pop fan an aspiring artist or maybe you just love a good deep dive then you'll probably get something out of this now if you happen to be an older k-pop fan or maybe you're someone who just doesn't get the hype then i can tell you as a songwriter and a k-pop fan more specifically a big fan of girls generation who originally didn't really like oh, twice it's time to give twice their flowers and this is why
Hey guys, it's editing John John here. Sorry, I'm in the middle of moving, which is part of the reason this video has taken a little bit longer than I would have liked. But while <laughs> editing this video, some things happened with Cheon where she was wearing some inappropriate symbols on her clothing. I just really want to make it clear that this video is not intended to condone hate of any kind or symbols thereof, of course. Personally, I'm a little upset that it happened a couple times, especially when the Holocaust is not a small moment in history by any means. I know in certain religions and cultures, there is a symbol symbol that is similar to the swastika that is generally regarded towards peace, but that's very clearly not what was on the shirt she was wearing. And while I am glad that Cheung apologized, it's important to recognize that it's not my apology to accept nor reject. So I would encourage you to listen to the thoughts and opinions of oneses who are Jewish who were affected by this because their feelings are the ones that really matter. But I do want to make it clear that this video is not meant to condone that in any way. So I wanted to pop in really quickly to make sure that was clear before you enjoy the rest of this video. So thank you and let's get back into it. Japan is... Okay, we had talked about that already and I'm, I'm glad he addressed that. We had talked about it already. I don't condone it either. Uh, I don't condone the symbol or any of that, but I do appreciate the fact that she apologized. Not mine to accept, of course, I'm still a new once, but it's not going to stop me from promoting twice. So. It's the world's second largest music market, and it's held that title for a good long while. If you're not familiar, Japan's bustling music scene goes beyond J-pop and encapsulates a plethora of micro-genres. This includes rock, new wave, city pop, techno, hip-hop, synth-pop, enka, which is a more traditional Japanese style of music, synth-pop, which Yellow Magic Orchestra helped to pioneer in the 80s, Vocaloid, and so many others. Basically, if you can think of a music genre, it can sit under the big J-pop term umbrella, but that didn't really happen until the 90s when the Japanese music scene went through a bit of a revolution in the form of kawaii culture. Kawaii, the Japanese word for cute, is a specific culture and aesthetic unique to Japan. The word kawaii comes from kawaiushi during the Taisho period, which kind of meant shy, embarrassed, and lovable from about 1912 to 1926. It has since evolved into encompassing more feelings of like caring and love. While the modern concept of kawaii didn't fully arrive until the 70s, its roots can still be traced back to the Taisho period when Yumeji Takehisa led the romanticism movement by combining western art styles like Art Nouveau with traditional Japanese styles. Takehisa-san is often credited with coining the signature kawaii style of painting thin women with big eyes and melancholy expressions on their faces. Japan has a very long history of being a fierce country, let's say, with an aggressive military. In World War II alone, they attacked French Indo China, which is now Vietnam, Cambodia, and surrounding areas. They attacked the USA, Philippines, Guam, Thailand, Malaysia, Hong Kong, China, and a lot of other places too. Japan had already colonized multiple places around the world, more specifically the Korean Peninsula, until 1945, when World War II came to an end following the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And when the Japanese Empire was finally defeated, it was in desperate need of a rebrand. In 1974, on a vinyl coin purse, the face of kawaii culture was officially born in the form of Hello Kitty. Created by Yuko Shimizu, Kite Huaito was marketed to preteens and girls, and featured features a white cat with a large head, eyes, and small nose. Hello Kitty doesn't feature many facial expressions, which meant kids could use their imagination to give her any kind of story and emotion, even though her official backstory is that she's from somewhere outside of London in the UK. Hello Kitty's- <laughs> That's funny. I, no, again, I, talking about, he was talking about World War II there. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff that happened back then that we're not going to get into here that involves a lot of politics and and a lot of stuff that we don't want to get into, it's past, it's put in the past, um, you know, war is never good, right? So we always want to get past wartime. It's not good for anybody. We've discussed that in at length at times. So, yeah, not something we want to get into. And I'm sorry those two bombings had to happen. Um, the way they did, and it's, yeah, we're not going to get into that either, so. Popularity declined throughout the 80s as kids got older, and just like Taylor Swift coming back stronger than a 90s trend, Hello Kitty became the nostalgia trend of the 1990s. 
I've spoken about it at length in my deep dive on BOA, but the 1997 Asian financial crisis is an important historical event to remember because it affected a lot of Asian exports around the world. To put it simply, if you're not familiar with it, it's a period of time when many Eastern and Southeastern Asian countries had their currencies rapidly collapse and it caused a lot of issues, but it also created an opportunity to problem solve and work together too. Japan and Korea have had difficult relations throughout history due to Japan's occupation of Korea for most of the first half of the 1900s. Following the liberation of Korea in 1945, South Korea enacted the Law for Punishing Anti-National Deeds aimed at restricting access and distribution of Japanese media. This led to a decades-long censorship that didn't come to an end until President Kim Tae-jung ended it in 1998. Before the 90s, Japan's economy was rapidly growing during a time often referred to as the Japanese economic miracle. However, as the 90s continued, its economy began to stagnate. The Asian financial crisis in Japan led to many bankruptcies and its GDP growth rate slowed to about 1.6% eventually sinking into a recession. Roughly 40% of Japanese exports at the time went to Asian countries, but the Asian financial crisis made it so that a lot of Asian countries needed to boost their own economies and help out their neighbors. During the ban of Japanese media, Koreans weren't really allowed to hear Japanese pop songs natively in Japanese. Masters were sent to Korea where cover versions were produced. Even though Japanese artists did have popularity there, Koreans really could only listen to these Korean cover versions. It was during the Asian financial crisis that Korea started to have its own acts, sing in languages like Mandarin Chinese, for example, to sell records abroad, which helped its own and other economies. It was also around this time when Aikyo in Korea grew. Aikyo is similar to kawaii and is, for all intents and purposes, Korea's cuteness culture. It's shy, cute, lovable, and is usually depicted by young girls. Soon, it became very clear that both in Japan and Korea, cute, Cells. Kawaii culture expanded to anime, merch, and then films, and music acts in an attempt to rid itself of not only its aggressive past, but also negative racial stereotypes in the West. Japan's new export of cuteness took the world by storm and has since nearly become synonymous with the country. Female J-pop acts like Ayumi Hamasaki, Butara Hikaru, Morni Musume, and more became popular during this time. South Korea was hit hard by the financial crisis and yeah, and hence the creation of baby metal, which just wrecked my mind the first time I saw him. Went, what? Wait, what? <laughs> How does that work? <laughs> you haven't seen and you want to see? Let me know. <laughs> and needed to recover. So with the censorship ban lifted, SM Entertainment taught a 14-year-old girl named Boa Japanese and sent her to Japan to sell records, and she succeeded. And you can sell your records with DistroKid. DistroKid is one of the best and leading music distributors helping artists like you and me get our music and videos up on places like Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, and more. With a simple design and interface that's easy to use, you can distribute as much music as you want for one small yearly price. DistroKid's got a whole long list of services to help get your music out there, but they also can help you get your music videos out there too with DistroVid. A separate service by DistroKid, DistroVid is music video distribution made easy. Simply choose which platform you'd like your music video to go to, add your artist name, and release date. You can add your record label if you've got one, pick the language it's in, and it's genres. Next, add some information like song title, featured artist information, specify if it's live footage or not, and choose your file. Make sure it's not a lyric video and isn't a medley. It's got to be one song per video. Add a description talking about your music video, songwriter and credit information, link or create a Vivo channel if you'd like, link your Apple Music artist profile, and check all the important boxes. Then your music video will be on its way to stores. So use my special VIP link to save yourself 7% on your first year's membership with DistroKid. Link is in the description. How do you enjoy- Yeah, uh, I love sites like that. And by the way, that's his, not mine. That's his sponsor. We don't have sponsors here, uh, except for y'all. So, and when you do sponsor something, I do shout you out. So, all right, just to let you know. Um, but yeah, it, it, I love sites like that because they they really create opportunities for creators, not just musicians, but creators in general, like YouTube does, and I appreciate that.
in Japan has come in different waves over the last 20 plus years or so. The Japanese music industry is a seven plus billion dollar industry and has been an epicenter for artists to try to break into from around the world for its passionate fan base and lucrative potential. The first wave of Hallyu came to Japanese shores in the form of Baby Boa and KBS TV series Winter Sonata. Nami Island, where Winter Sonata was filmed, became a hot spot for Japanese tourists in Korea due to the show's popularity. Boa became the first South Korean pop star to break through in Japan, where her first three albums sold over a million copies there each. The second Korean wave in Japan is where things get a little interesting. The 2000s saw a rapid growth in celebrity culture, technology, the internet, and it gave birth to social media. The world and its music industries largely remained separate until things like YouTube helped the development of online music culture and Absolutely. awareness. If you've seen my deep dives on Kara or Girls' Generation, you'll know that the idea that social media could help foreign acts rise to the top of the charts in other countries came about during this time, thanks to viral dance crazes and catchy pop hooks. Luckily, Korea had a little trick up its sleeve that became built into its music identity. Multiple languages. Boy group TVXQ's debut. Truth. Truth. Absolute truth. Excuse me for a second. Yeah, that's absolute truth. And it's it's um yeah, there's there's a lot of tricks that they use in the music industry over there that I really appreciate. Excuse me, y'all. song Hug has four different versions, Korean, Mandarin Chinese, Japanese, and English. And while TVXQ did not initially do very well in Japan, Purple Line became their breakthrough hit when it debuted at number one on the Oricon charts in 2008. Their signature hit, Merotic, became a massive single at the time and prompted them to become the very first Korean group to be invited to perform at NHK's Kohaku Uta Gassen, a big New Year's Eve special in Japan akin to Dick Clark's special here in the US. Most impressively, nice. they became the first K-pop boy group to perform at the Tokyo Dome in 2008 for the finale of their Secret Code tour. Clearly, if Korea could conquer Japan in music once, it could do it again. The 2000s is where it became commonplace for South Korean groups to make their Japanese debuts and find success there. Big Bang won Best Pop Video and Best New Artist at the MTV VMAs Japan in 2010. 2PM had all 100,000 tickets sell out in under a minute for the Republic of 2PM tour and even became the second best-selling new artist in Japan in 2011. Chinese set a record at the time for the most people in attendance to a Korean act's first Japanese tour with over 200,000 people. When a Korean act debuts in Japan, typically speaking, the style and vibe of the artist will change a little bit. K-pop has its own genetic makeup in terms of songwriting as it often fuses multiple genres in one song together. In Japan, K-pop music videos tend to be cleaner, white becomes a dominating color with softer shades, and the music video sets tend to look a little different. Of course, this is not always the case, but a cleaner look does well with Japanese audiences. This stems from the Japanese idol industry where audiences prefer to see a group go from zero to hero, as opposed to Korea where idols are expected to debut as basically objects of perfection, so to speak. Consider a Japanese debut with a clean, bright look as a way of wiping the slate and making a foreign act seem more approachable. Gotta love music marketing. It's important to acknowledge that it wasn't just boy groups who did well during the second Hallyu wave in Japan. Girl groups did too. Kara were named Japan's number one rookie artist of 2010 and sold over a million physical singles in two years, becoming one of the fastest selling Korean acts in Japan. Their hit Mr. was the most downloaded K-pop song in Japan as of 2012, and they also were the first female Korean. I think we've only seen them once. Y'all want to see more from Kara, uh, Kara, you let me know. We'll get it done. Or 2PM or any of them an artist to perform at the Tokyo Dome. Girls' Generation also opened doors in Japan when their Girls first Generation Japanese album well, helped them, them become a certified million seller by the RIAJ, the first by a non-Japanese girl group to do so. Their Eikyo slash Kawaii anthem G was also a certified million seller by the RIAJ, showing that the concept of cute didn't just work for Japan, it also worked for Korea.
Bubblegum Pop Hook's bright and clean aesthetics and internet trends helped spread K-pop throughout Japan and the rest of the world. But there was still a barrier to overcome as the 2010s progressed. Millennials were getting older, groups were starting to disband or go on hiatus, or members of boy groups were starting to do their mandatory military service. So for a very brief period, the Hollywood wave in Japan slowed down a bit. Korea had shown though that its relationship with its neighbor could mend when the contract was mutually beneficial. K-pop's global expansion outside of Asia was in a position to grow exponentially, but it also needed to fan the fire that K-pop had started in Japan too. More specifically, it needed to keep the spark of inspiration within the next generation of future idols and really bridge this gap. Yeah. And what better way to do that than to have the public vote on a brand new girl group that could contain members from both countries. Twice got its start on Survivor. 16. Yep. We have that over on the Patreon if y'all want to see it in full. It is in full over there. Okay. Um, we also have two or three twice concerts over there. Full concerts. Good stuff. Rival Reality Show 16, which pitted 16 JYP trainees against each other to debut in JYP's next girl group. Featuring girls from Korea, Japan, Canada, and Thailand, the show divided the trainees into major groups and minor groups. Majors were girls already on track to debut, and the minor group contestants would have to work hard to try and get into the major group, with the lineup changing frequently after select missions. During 16, we were treated with some memorable moments like Dahyun's Eagle Dance, <laughs> Hana's cooking segment, funny, 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 tangan, tangan. and Jihyo fighting against people who criticized her weight by singing all about that bass, which I'm 100% sure is a slay. Twice was originally intended to be a seven member girl group and the first new girl group from JYP since Miss A in 2010. However, in a surprise twist, Perfect for reality television, JYP announced in the final episode of 16 that TWICE would actually become a nine-member girl group. In addition to Nayeon, Jonghyun, Tahyun, Mina, Sana, Taeyong, and Jihyo, Taiwanese trainee Tui was added as the audience's final pick, and previously eliminated Japanese trainee Momo was added as JYP felt the group needed someone with her skill level in dance. Naturally, this move caused a lot of controversy on a show that was already generating negative press for treating the girls unfairly. People said it was disrespectful to the other eliminated trainees, JYP's motives were called into question, and drew heavy criticism because Girls' Generation, whom was still at the top of their game at the time, was known for having nine members and had just recently become eight following Jessica's departure from the group. The market was noticeably open for a nine member. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. What happened with Jessica? Y'all let me know. I didn't know they had moved to eight during that time. They become eight following Jessica's departure from the group. The market was noticeably open for a nine member girl group, and many people questioned if voting may have been rigged because of this. K pop's third generation was still in its infancy, and clearly, Twice was starting off on the wrong foot. But luckily, and they didn't know it at the time, but Twice, with over 42 million albums sold to date, was about to become one of the best selling girl groups of all time in the entire world. Now, if I were to list every single accomplishment and accolade that Twice has received, this video would be hours long, so I'm not going to. Sorry in advance to the Um, you forgot about Keyboard Warriors of YouTube. I said at the beginning of this video that success is more than numbers. I like him because we've talked about them. <laughs> but that doesn't mean we can't talk about some of them. Twice's debut track like Ooh Ah hit 50 million views on YouTube within five months, becoming one of the most viewed debut music videos of all time. Tear Up became a massive success in 2016, debuting atop multiple real-time music charts and became a viral Great meme thanks to this ham. TT became one of the best performing songs of 2016, topping the Circle Then Gaon digital chart for four consecutive weeks. Cheer Up ultimately won Song of the Year twice in 2016 at the Melon Music Awards and the Mnet Asian Music Awards. Twice's fourth mini album Signal topped the Circle album chart in 2017, becoming the second best-selling EP for the entire month of May, and at the same time had accumulated over a million albums sold doing so in just a year and seven months after debuting. Twice's first full-length studio album, Twice 
Twistagram helped them become the first female K-pop act to simultaneously top the Billboard World Albums chart and the World Digital Song Sales chart with Twistagram's lead single, Likey. Their next album, What Is Love, made Twice the first female artist and fifth act ever to earn a platinum certification by the KMCA for selling over 250,000 copies. Its reissue, Summer Nights, passed 100 million streams and sold 2.5 million downloads on the Circle Music Chart, earning them a platinum single certification for streaming and download. Just so you're aware, KMCA certifications were only introduced in 2018, which is why many acts prior to 2018 don't have a lot or don't really have any at all. But regardless, Twice was ready to sweep. Their music video for Yes or Yes got 31.4 million views in 24 hours on YouTube, becoming the seventh biggest 24-hour debut of all time back then. The music video for Fancy in 2019 beat that with 42.1 million views in 24 hours. Their more and more albums sold over 563,000 copies on the Circle charts, giving them the title of highest sales volume for a girl group in the charts history at the time. Their third full-length Korean studio album, Formula of Love, sold over 700,000 pre-orders and debuted at wow. number three on the Billboard 2 100 chart. Wow. Their English language single, The Feels, was included in several year end best of lists, including Rolling Stone, Pitchfork, and Enemy, and was certified gold by the RIAA. But Twice's success in Japan is really something magnificent. Their debut album, Hashtag Twice, sold over 136,000 copies in its first week, landing at number two on the Oricon charts, which had been the highest first week sales total by a Korean artist in Japan in two years at the time. Their first original Japanese track, One More Time, sold over 130,000 copies in 48 hours, becoming the fastest selling we haven't seen that one. I know we haven't. I don't remember that one. So y'all let me know. And of course, we'll get them done. Now, of course, the Japan singles will have to be done over here. Uh, I'm sorry, over on the Patreon. They can't be done over here. But y'all let me know and we'll get them done. Selling released by any South Korean girl group in Japan. Both One More Time and its album Hashtag Twice were certified platinum by the RIAJ and made them the first Korean girl group to go platinum for a single and album in Japan in the same year. Hashtag Twice won Album of the Year at the 32nd Japan Gold Disc Awards. By the time 2017 came to a close, they were number three in the top artist category on Billboard Japan's year-end rankings and invited to perform at Kohaku Uta Gassen, which was the first time a Korean artist was invited to perform since 2011. Their second Japanese single, Candy Pop, sold over 300,000 copies in its first week, topping the Oricon charts and prompted their first concert tour across Japan. Wake Me Up was certified double platinum by the RIAJ, becoming the first physical single by a foreign female artist to do so. Twice's cover of I Want You Back by the Jackson 5 was chosen as the theme song for Sensei Kunshu. BDZ And I don't think we've done either one of those either. And I don't think we've done BDZ. Y'all let me know. Because I don't remember some of these. I do know the song BDZ. We've seen that, I think, in an encore that we did over here. But I don't think we've done the videos. So y'all let me know. Or Bulldozer, their first Japanese album recorded the highest first day sales total by a Korean girl group in Japan by hitting just shy of 90,000 records. It became their fifth consecutive platinum certification in Japan. Hashtag Twice2 broke their own sales record in 24 hours with over 95,000 units sold. It was then they made even more history by becoming the first female K-pop act to hold a Japanese dome tour selling out all tickets in under a minute attracting over 220 20,000 people. A Japanese Dome Tour is very significant because not only is it reserved for very popular acts or sporting events, but also because each venue can hold anywhere from 25 to 45,000 people. And to sell them out is an incredible feat. By the end of 2019, Twice had ranked in the top five on Billboard Japan for three consecutive years and become the fifth most streamed artist on Spotify in Japan too. Hashtag Twice 3 became their seventh number one album in 
in Japan. All in all, TWICE has done some incredible things. They've been honored with the Breakthrough Award at Billboard's Women in Music, as I previously mentioned. What? They're the first female K-pop act to hold two separate headlining arena tours in the US, the world's biggest music market. They're the third female Korean act to chart on the Canadian Hot 100. They signed a landmark joint venture with Republic Records in the US, a major and significant step in K-pop's global popularity. Their album Ready to Be surpassed 1.7 million in pre-order stock, becoming only the fifth K-pop girl group in history to do so. They've won so many top awards, their Wikipedia list is nearly 30 printed pages long, and as of 2021, TWICE is the highest selling girl group of all time in South Korea. But why them? How did they do it? How did they become the biggest girl bosses in K-pop? There are a multitude of reasons why TWICE is so popular both domestically and abroad. JYP girl groups such as Wonder Girls and Miss A were known for embracing retro styles. Park Jin Young, as I explained in my deep dive on Stray Kids, was an artist in the 90s and was very heavily inspired by Motown Records, even naming rooms in his building after the black artists who inspired his musical dreams. This is evidenced in not only many interviews. I, I was just a kid who loved Motown so much and I studied how Barry Gordy started in Motown and just try to follow his footsteps. But in one of the most famous and groundbreaking There ain't nothing wrong with that. Barry, Barry Gordy started a monster of a company with Motown. So, yeah. Hmm, nothing wrong with that. K-pop songs Nobody by Wonder Girls where its music video references this directly. However, JYP took a different direction with TWICE. The 2010s, as I previously mentioned, were a transitional decade, where millennials got older and Gen Z really started coming of age. Clicking into second gear as you get older is a really weird experience because music and other media starts to target other audiences, so it's really confusing because you're still young, but it feels like music doesn't hit the same. TWICE's growth and success is very symbolic of this phenomenon on because TWICE embraced modernity. Stylistically, TWICE's music regularly incorporates online culture, an easy example being TT which references the crying emoticon or their hashtag TWICE albums obviously including a hashtag as redundant as that sounds. I bring this up because a lot of millennial music doesn't really dive into this so boldly. There's always examples that say otherwise of course I acknowledge that, but a lot of Gen Z artists do because well they grew up when the internet was a widespread thing. This is not an attempt to create a generational divide, I'm using it to demonstrate that this one teeny tiny aspect was enough to put off some of the previously targeted demographic in music who were now growing up into their mid to late 20s. Basically, embracing the next generation is a surefire way to hit. But that's a little one-dimensional. TWICE is also popular because their music, up until recently, very consistently employed cuter concepts. Aikyo and kawaii culture are intrinsic to idol culture in South Korea and Japan, respectively. History shows us that cuteness sells, and in the case of TWICE, cuteness helped them stand out among girl groups. At this time, it was common for girl groups to put on more assertive concepts as the millennial generation of idols were fully grown adults. It's not to say that bright slash cute concepts were not non-existent of course, but as people get older, even in K-pop, people try different things. Also, K-pop was rapidly expanding out past South Korean and Asian borders by the mid-2010s. The oh, yeah. USA is the world's biggest and most lucrative music market, and K-pop had its eyes set on it thanks to acts like Psy. By 2015, K-pop's groundbreaking achievements in the US were a small handful compared to the ocean-sized amount there is now. We can't forget the work that had been done before then, but we can also acknowledge that the K-pop industry had a long way to go at the time to really break through here. But it's not just the cutesy concept incorporation of online culture and age though that worked in TWICE's favor, sonically, their music was also a little different. In the 2010s, dance pop had evolved into a much stronger EDM style that young audiences were attracted to. Mm. Songs like Girls' Generation's Catch Me If You Can is a prime example of the festival-driven sound that populated radio and pop music charts even in Korea. During this time, especially as the third generation of K-pop groups were debut- And I think that's one of the things that, um, amasses k-pop to different cultures right is they're not afraid of different things right they're not afraid of trying different things they're not afraid of you know going into the like he said the internet culture and and this that the, they're not afraid of it they they have zero fear of it right and they have zero fear of using different styles in music like um you know 
twice, for instance. The, no Fear at All, Dreamcatcher, Blackpink, Big Bang, BTS. None of it. There's no fear of it, right? They just go with it. And if it doesn't sell well, okay, well, we'll move, we'll pivot to a different point, and we'll go that way. And if that doesn't work, we'll pivot to a different point, and we'll go that way. But it always works. That's the thing. It always works. I mean, it's even drawn, you know, he's talking about the mid, mid-20s mid crowd here, mid to late 20s, which is great, right? But it also draws us. Viewing left and right, K-pop really developed its signature genetic sound of fusing EDM, hip-hop, dance pop, and R&B elements with unexpected structures and looping instruments. Twice, however, dubbed their music Color Pop for its bright tones, high-speed beats per minute, and straying away from the hip-hop bass many new K-pop songs began to rely heavily right. on. Taeyong and Dahyun might have been the group's designated rappers, but their music wasn't as heavily reliant on hip-hop and rap being the backbone of their hits. Another the reason twice became popular is because these girls are funny I want to be your famous. Yeah. <laughs> 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 And a transitioning bunch of nuts is what they are. Oh, they're hilarious. It's just fun stuff, you know. That's the whole thing about it. It's just fun, and it's good. That's that's the other thing. Open music market might have been on Twice's side, but it's not like they haven't had their fair share of difficulties and resistances to overcome. The first one is the initial controversy over its member count and the addition of Tui and Momo. The Girls' Generation comparison started before Twice even had a chance to drop an original song together. It didn't help when JYP gave them similar concepts to SNSD like the commonalities between O oh and Cheer Up, especially since Cheer Up was also a massive hit, and comment sections from kids who didn't grow up with Girls' Generation and therefore obviously wouldn't know how they are similar were filled with people people saying concepts like cheer up hadn't been done before. Then as Twice got more successful, then came the battle of who outsold who, driving an unnecessary wedge between the two groups and generations. Twice has been the subject of fat shaming, rape- Man, I see that all the time. All the time. You hear, well, so-and-so did that first. So-and-so did that. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's the thing. It makes no difference. I understand that, you know, different groups have different fan bases, and that's their core base, right? I get that. I do. I get it. But I see the word multi-stan all the time, too. I like that term, right? I like different types of music, right? All different types of music. I love all the stuff y'all send. We don't get into the other stuff here because I don't want to hear it. I don't care that so-and-so did that first or this concept came from. And there's nothing wrong with taking a concept from somebody you admire and working it into what you're doing. I mean... <laughs> Racism and dealing with panic and anxiety disorders that would naturally come with trying to please millions of people and working literally nonstop for years. Sasang fans are problematic in K-pop for dangerous behavior, oftentimes endangering the lives of idols, and the Twice members are no exception in having to deal with them. Mina has been the recipient of a death threat when a Sasang fan posted a picture of a knife over their wrist, 
which I'm not going to show in this video, but you can look it up here. Tui got a death threat on VLive, a live streaming platform where idols can connect with fans. Taeyong has spoken about getting a series of anonymous calls and texts from numbers she doesn't recognize. Personal hardships play a role too. Tiho trained for a decade before being selected for 16 and ultimately twice. Momo once had to lose 15 pounds in one week in order to do their debut showcase, and so she said all she ate in that one week was a cube of ice. I mean, Tui, Momo, Sana, and Mina all had to learn Korean fluently too, which obviously learning a language is difficult. Even now, as they shift focus toward conquering the US, none of the members speak English conversationally or fluently, which unfortunately is not an advantage they have as compared to BTS, who luckily had RM to handle many interviews as he too continued to grow his English skills. The US unfortunately has a large population that is very resistant to non-English speakers, which gives TWICE a disadvantage in this country. However, it should be noted and celebrated that TWICE is getting better at English, and they've had a lot of success here without speaking it fluently, demonstrating that these girls can and will overcome any obstacles put in front of them. So if you've made it all the way to this point in the video, you may still be asking yourself, why does TWICE's success matter and why do they deserve their flowers? It's cool they've achieved stuff, but why does it matter and why should you care? Firstly, TWICE regularly attributes part of their success to those who came before them. Nyan once posted on Instagram that she wanted to one day be able to convey emotion through her voice and music like Taeyeon, one of her idols. While sure, in hindsight, it probably wasn't great to post that she was listening to that on SoundCloud illegally before Secret was actually released, especially as an artist herself. But regardless, the emotion and praise she was giving should be acknowledged and valued at its root for what she was intending to do. In 2017, Sana once said she was surprised people in Japan were interested in TWICE, but because of girl groups like Girls' Generation and Kara paving the way for Hallyu there, it inspired the members to put more effort in areas they lacked, and they hoped to visit Japan more often, which is exactly what they went on to do. The nine members also frequently contribute to writing their own music. Their 2022 hit, Celebrate, in commemoration of their contract renewal with JYP, was written entirely by each of the members and JYP himself. Taeyong frequently writes her own rap sections. Jihyo, Jonghyun, and Nayeon have all written lyrics for entire songs for Twice. Tahyun wrote two songs herself on their latest two albums, Between One and Two and Ready to Be, showing that Twice has music chops beyond just singing and yep. dancing and looking cute. While they history do. shows us that cuteness does sell well in South Korea and Japan, Twice's success should not be boiled down to simply being young and pretty. All nine members have worked themselves to the bone traveling around the globe between interviews, brand deals, long tours, reality TV shows, 36 singles, 7 studio albums, 12 EPs, training, rehearsals, studying, and so much more in just 8 years together. If TWICE ever goes on hiatus, that will truly be something to celebrate. Not because it might signify the end of an era or something, but it will be because these girls, without a doubt, for how hard they've worked, have earned it. Even as they grow into mature adults or more mature concepts, like many who've come before them, Twice is not losing what made Twice special to begin with. Their voices are maturing and their music sonics are evolving with them in songs like Basics, Scientist, and Set Me Free. That color pop sound is still there when that explosive chorus shows up, but stylistically is now supported by not just growing performers, but also a growing audience. Twice shows no- It's true. It's true. So much truth in that. I, they've spent eight years working their fannies off. You know? Along with the ten that Geo put in before that, plus the, you know, three, four, five that all the others did in training. You know, it, there's a lot of years involved in this. A lot of work. And I admire them for it. No sign of slowing down with its Japanese members Mina, Sana, and Momo, Misamo collectively, officially debuting in Japan in July of 2023. The Empire State Building in New York lit up with Twice's colors to celebrate the release of their mini album Ready to Be, and their fifth world tour is set to begin this spring. Although a heavy focus on the US might be frustrating to some fans, it's 
quite symbolic of the obstacles Twice is now pro at clearing and highlights how their journey as one of the biggest girl groups in the world is far from over. It should inspire you to never stop chasing your own dreams, especially as an aspiring musician. There is always ground to break no matter what part of history you find yourself in, especially when you acknowledge the work that was done before you like Twice has. Despite popular belief, that work adds value to your own and doesn't take away from it. Twice may have had big three privilege of coming from a company that held a larger stake in the industry, but that doesn't negate the work that they've done in their own right as performers. Sunmi of Wonder Girls even credited Twice in their success for giving JYP enough funds to get a brand new building and expanding his company. Twice deserves their flowers for taking their advantages in time, history, and music and not solely relying on them to overcome the many disadvantages that they've had. Twice deserves every ounce of credit for their success and work ethic because at this point, it's entirely their own. Twice helped revive the Hollywood wave in Japan, helped put South Korea on the map and push it to become the world's seventh largest music market now, helped repair relations between two countries with a rocky history by finding a common denominator, all the while providing escapism, entertainment and inspiration for people around the globe and that's why twice's success and undeniable role in the hollywood wave matters truth i love absolute truth so yeah a lot of controversy in that i understand that i get it uh i understand the controversy between you know fandoms of different groups i get it but there's no reason for it there just isn't I mean, I don't see the reasoning for it. Well, you know, Twice did that first, or Blackpink did that first, or Stray Kids did that first, or whatever. There's no reason for all that. There, ain't, there just isn't. Stop it. <laughs> I mean, even if you're a fan of one single group, and that's it, you're not listening to anybody else. Okay, I understand that, but... Come on, there's no reason to down everybody else. All right, my friends, thank you for joining us for that. Listen, it's always a great time when Twice is on. It's always a great time when y'all are here with me. I appreciate you. We're glad you're here. I will see y'all tomorrow. Got another great one coming. Right? Got a good day lined up. So we're going to have some fun. Y'all stick with us. This old Pops. We out.